my Gavanen folks. Today we have the interesting looking integral from 0 to infinity of x times cosine x minus sine x whole thing squared over x squared times 1 plus x squared dx. And what I've noticed is that when you throw in trig functions and polynomials in x, well at least simple looking polynomials like you know, linear and quadratic terms, the results are often quite beautiful and this will be no exception. So how exactly should we begin? Well, the no-brainer would be to expand the square so that we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared times cosine square x plus sine square x minus 2x cosine x times sine x over x squared times 1 plus x squared, terribly sorry about that, dx. Now, using the linearity of the integration operator, we can write this as three separate integrals one of them being the integral from 0 to infinity, x squared times cosine squared x, but there's an x squared term in the denominator. So that means we're left with this thing here, plus the integral from 0 to infinity, sine squared x over x squared times 1 plus x squared dx. That thing looks absolutely awesome. And of course, we have negative 2 times, rather wait, we have negative integral 0 to infinity and 2 cosine x times sine x is sine 2x. So we have sine 2x up top and the x term over there cancels out with one of the x terms at the bottom. So we have x times 1 plus x squared dx. Now this integral, I will refer to a video by me and my friend Quan from Q and Cube 3 where I solved it using Feynman's trick and he solved it using contour integration. Definitely an awesome video to check out. So this thing converges to pi over 4 times 1 plus 1 over e squared, an absolutely gorgeous looking result involving both our favorite transcendental numbers that are of course equal to 3. And now we're left with a couple of interesting looking integrals. One is this thing here that I'll call i sub 1. And I'll call this thing here i sub 2. So for i sub 1, we have the integral from 0 to infinity and cosine square x is up top. There's a way to expand cosine square using the double angle formula for the cosine function. So that's exactly what we'll do. We have 1 half 1 plus cosine 2x over 1 plus x squared dx. Okay, cool. So again, I'll just invoke the linearity of the integration operator and split this thing up so that we have 1 half integral 0 to infinity dx over 1 plus x squared plus 1 half times the integral from 0 to infinity cosine 2x over 1 plus x squared dx. Now, the first of these two is, of course, quite obvious. That's just the arctangent integral. And for the upper limit, we'll have pi over 2. And for the lower limit, we'll have arctangent 0, which is, of course, 0. So that we have the result converging to pi over 4. Now, the other integral, however, this is another very famous integral in integration result that I have derived in a previous video back in the early days of the channel. But there is something about that solution development that I just don't like. So I will probably make a better video on it very soon. In fact, that's a good idea. Anyway, so we have one half of the result of this thing will be pi over e squared. And no, wait, there's an extra factor of one half. So that's pi over 2 e squared. In other words, we have pi over 4 times 1 plus 1 over e squared, exactly like the previous integral. And I find that pretty cool. So what about the last integral? That's i sub 2. So i sub 2 is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity sine 2x over x times 1 plus x squared dx. And we could invoke a quick differentiation under the integral sine approach here and define the integral function i of alpha to be the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of alpha x over x times 1 plus x squared dx. So the target case would be alpha equal to 2, and a useful bit of information here 
is that i of zero equals, because sine of zero is zero, the integrand just collapses to zero. So i of zero equals zero is a useful initial value condition to know. So of course we will differentiate this thing with respect to the parameter alpha. And that gives us i prime of alpha on the left equal to, on switching up the order of the integration and differentiation operators, we will have the integral from zero to infinity of now the partial derivative with respect to alpha because of the Leibniz rule, sine of alpha x over x times one plus x squared dx. So we're differentiating partially with respect to x, which means that the x times one plus x squared term that's just what I'm writing over here, is treated as a constant, and we have the derivative of sine alpha x, which is cosine alpha x, and because of the chain rule, we have x over here as well, which cancels out quite nicely, and now we have again the familiar looking integral, that is cosine alpha x over 1 plus x squared dx. And this thing converges to one half of pi over e to the alpha, which looks absolutely gorgeous. And now we need to recover back the integral function. So for that, we'll integrate with respect to the alpha parameter. And that yields i of alpha on the left. On the right, we have pi over 2 times the integral of e to the negative alpha, which is, of course, e to the negative alpha over negative 1, or just plain old negative 1 over e to the alpha. And, of course, we have a constant of integration c. Now, we can figure out quite easily using the initial condition that i of 0 is 0. So plugging in alpha equal to 0 yields, or in our case, we would actually be talking about the limit as alpha approaches zero from the right. Yeah, that's that just about sounds right. So as alpha approaches zero from the right, we have zero on the left equal to negative pi over two times one plus c, implying that c is just pi over two. Very convenient indeed. So this implies that the integral i of alpha equals pi over 2 times 1 minus 1 over e to the alpha. So this implies that the target integral i sub 2, which is just the case of alpha equal to 2, equals pi over 2 times 1 minus 1 over e squared. And we see a pattern kind of emerge over here. Yeah, this integral is just engineered to yield a very beautiful result. Okay, cool, but what were the other two results? Oh yeah, they were exactly the same. So the results are supposed to be pi over 4 times 1 over times 1 plus 1 over e squared plus pi over 4 times, again, 1 plus 1 over e squared minus this result, pi over 2 times 1 minus 1 over e squared. And you double these two then you get pi over 2 times 1 plus 1 over e squared minus pi over 2 times 1 minus 1 over e squared. The pi over 2 terms cancel out, but that leaves us an absolutely gorgeous looking result. That is pi over 2 e squared, which of course is, we all know it's equal to 1 over 6. Anyway, this was pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.